The wait is over. 4G. Just got real. In 1999, Apple unveiled the iBook G3, and among its many new features, one major addition stood out. Airport. Or Wi-Fi, as we know it. Fast forward to the year 2025, and Wi-Fi is one of the most ubiquitous technologies in the world. Every major laptop features Wi-Fi connectivity, a standard, and it's something most of us take for granted. But Wi-Fi relies on having base stations for network access. And what if we walk out of range or if we're traveling? then our laptops can no longer stay connected to the internet. So what do we do then? For many people, hotspot tethering to a smartphone is the solution, and it's a perfectly valid way to stay connected when on the go. Personally though, I find that it drains the battery on my phone a bit too much, and I prefer to keep my phone alive in case of emergencies. An alternative is to use a device like this, which is a 4G radio that can connect to mobile networks and either transmit data as a portable Wi-Fi network or act as a USB internet connection. Again, this is a valid solution, but personally I try to avoid carrying around extra items on the go. And besides, I don't like having a 4G radio constantly in my pocket so close to my ball. So the question is, could I take a 4G modem and somehow integrate it into a laptop for internal use? That's what we will be finding out today. Now, I'm not going to experiment with my modern laptop because I don't want to risk destroying it. After all, I still need to edit this video on it. So instead, today's test subject will be this. This is a 2004 17-inch PowerBook G4. It has a single-core 1.5 GHz PowerPC processor, 2 GB of RAM, and a broken optical drive. In today's tech world, this is nothing too exciting, but back in 2004, it was a top-of-the-line portable powerhouse. So why this specific model then? Well, the right-hand USB port is located on a separate daughter board that's easy to access for modding. And also, I just thought it would be funny to add features to a 21-year-old laptop that modern Macs don't even have. Although, with the recent C1 chip, Apple might have plans to resurrect the previous cellular Mac project. Also, as we'll see later, that broken optical drive will come in handy for our project. As for the 4G modem, I'll be using this, uh, generic USB modem. There doesn't seem to be any proper branding on the device or its packaging, but it's the most common USB modem I could find on eBay. The reason why I'm not using the nice one from earlier is because most battery-operated portable hotspots require a battery to work and can't run directly off a USB power source. This, on the other hand, is designed specifically to run off USB. Before we do any surgery on the PowerBook, let's just test the USB hotspot to make sure it actually works. I inserted a SIM card with an active data plan and plugged it into the USB port. Sure enough, after a few seconds it showed up as a Wi-Fi network and I could connect to it to browse the internet. However, there was a problem. Under the network settings, macOS wasn't detecting this device as a USB network, even though this device is advertised as supporting USB tethering. Now, I could just install this device internally and connect to it via Wi-Fi, but that's nowhere near as sufficient as a direct hardwired connection. Besides, having it operate as a secondary Wi-Fi network exposes the device to potential wireless interference or even security vulnerabilities, whereas a wired connection is more reliable and secure. I assumed that this device would just act like a USB Ethernet adapter and present itself under the network settings page. But no matter what I did, I just couldn't get it to work that way. That's when I decided to test it on a Windows PC and discovered its secret. Wait, what? That's right, this device wasn't just some boring 4G radio. It was actually running Android. Specifically, Android version 4.4. USB debugging was enabled by default, and I could connect to it via ADB. A quick teardown shows that it runs off a quad-core Snapdragon 410 processor and has 512 megabytes of RAM, with 4 gigabytes of flash storage. This thing has the same processor as my old Galaxy A5. Since it runs Android, I wonder if I can run Doom on it. Let's save that idea for a future video. For now, let's focus on the task at hand. With this new information in mind, I suspect this device isn't acting as a USB Ethernet adapter at all, but rather it's using Android's USB tethering feature. Because of Apple being Apple, macOS doesn't natively support Android's USB tethering feature, but thanks to the developer community, third-party extensions are available. My searches brought me to a system extension that the developer JWise calls horrendous, spelt horrendous. Initially, I tried installing the extension, but it appears to be built for Intel Macs running OS X Snow Leopard or newer, and PowerPC Macs can only run to OS X Leopard. 
However, developer Side Effect 42 was able to make a PowerPC build based on version 7.5. After installing the PowerPC build of the driver and restarting the machine, the 4G modem showed up as a network device. Just to make sure it's working properly, I turned off Wi-Fi and was able to access the network configuration page through the USB connection. Now that we've confirmed everything works, it's time to open up the PowerBook. Here's the plan. Since the optical drive is broken, I can remove it entirely to free up space for the modem board. Instead of soldering directly to the USB port, I'm going to attach a USB extension port and plug it in internally. That way, in the future, I can easily unplug this modem in case I need to diagnose it or swap it out for something else. Now, I know I previously said that I wanted to run this modem entirely off USB. However, early testing showed that sometimes it would become unstable and boot loop when used with certain SIM cards. In order to mitigate the issue, I found that connecting a 4V power supply to these conspicuous power pads on the board allowed it to run more stably. So, I'll be replacing the PRAM battery with the cell I extracted from my MacBook and also wiring it up to the modem. There's no need to worry about it running flat, since the PowerBook PRAM battery is designed to be rechargeable, and the system will automatically top up its charge when it's running. The body of the PowerBook is metal, which isn't great for signal reception, so I'll be positioning the antenna as close as possible to the optical drive's opening. This opening will act as a signal window through the metal casing. With everything in place, let's give it a test run. The power button can be turned on even without the top case installed, and this can be done by bridging these two pads on the main board. With the power button up and running, we can see that it's successfully connected to the internet through the USB modem. Now, it's time to fully reassemble the machine. With the new PowerBook G4 4G fully reassembled, I went ahead and took it out on a field test. So what's it like using the PowerBook G4 4G? In one word, horrendous. Okay, that may be a little too harsh. The fact that it even works is pretty amazing, but it's not about its flaws. It lacks the polish of a final product, and that's why this video is more of a showcase than a proper tutorial. During testing, I've identified three main areas for improvement. First, signal reception. 
These modems have very small antenna that already struggle to get signal indoors, let alone inside a metal laptop casing. I could improve signal strength by connecting a larger antenna and routing it to a better location inside the laptop. As a matter of fact, I even bought an extended antenna and ordered a newer hardware revision of the device because they have the sockets on a board to connect external antenna, whereas the old version doesn't. Unfortunately, the eBay seller sent me the same old version, even though the listing showed the newer one. But this is something I could look at in the future. Second, power draw. The current version suffers from boot loops because it's drawing too much power from the USB port, which is why it has to rely on a PowerBox PRAM battery. But what if the PRAM battery is depleted? Well, then the modem will also stop working reliably. Again, this is known to have been an issue with first generation, and it's been fixed in your hardware revision. Also, it seems to only happen to power PC Macs, because I've also tested this on Windows PCs, as well as Intel or Apple Silicon Macs, and it didn't happen there, so that's kind of weird. Finally, control. Right now, the modem works all the time whether you want it or not. Since we no longer have an optical drive, I could potentially fit a switch somewhere to turn the modem on or off, or toggle between the modem and the USB port mode. Because the modem is wired internally to the USB port, it can't be used at the same time as the external USB port, so being able to switch between them could be useful. Despite its flaws, I'm still glad that this proof of concept worked. It also makes me optimistic, because if a hobby project like this could work, then just imagine how good an officially supported implementation of mobile data on MacBooks could be. This couldn't have been possible without the help of Scarlet PPC, so I'd like to give thanks for the time she spent diagnosing things and offering her expertise on PowerPC machines. As for the PowerBook, I can finally say that I beat Apple to the punch in making a cellular connected Mac. Besides, it's not like the conveniently made expansion cards that did this exact same thing. Right? Son of a bitch.